Before we move on to the more advanced topic of Redux middleware, I think now's a good time to get set up for ES6. And this will just get us all set up for when we do eventually move on to React. And we'll see how we can transfer an ES5 Redux application into ES6. And it's really easy. Let's go ahead and implement a quick Webpack config and get set up to use ES6. So to get set up with ES6, I've gone ahead and initialized my package.json. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and import our dependency. So npm install our dependencies. So in your terminal, go ahead and navigate to the directory that you're going to be in. So I'm in mine. And let's go ahead and npm install our dependency. So there's quite a few. So there's firstly, there is Babel core. There is then Babel dash loader. There is then Babel dash preset dash ES 2015. There's another one, Babel dash preset dash stage dash three. And then we just need to install webpack and webpack dash dev dash server. And we'll go ahead and save these into our package.json. So just to explain what we've installed there. So all the Babel dependencies that we have installed are going to convert our ES6 JavaScript into ES5 JavaScript as ES6 isn't available in all the modern browsers yet. So what happens is we write ES6 in our safe environment and then Babel and Webpack convert that to ES5 and that's what we ship out into, into production essentially. So we get the benefits of using ES6, ES7, what you know, whatever future version we want, but we can be certain that it's going to work in all browsers because Babel will convert it to ES5, which is available everywhere. So now we've got all our dependencies installed, we can go ahead and start to create our webpack config. So go ahead and touch our webpack.config.js file and then open that up in your text editor. First thing we're going to do is module.exports equals and it's just going to pass an object. So the first thing we're going to need is an entry and this is just the file that we write our ES6 in essentially and ours is going to be in source and index.js. The next thing we need is an output and this takes a file name and that is going to be .bundle.js. So all that happens there is we write our ES6 in index.js and then Webpack runs it through Babel and then spits out an ES5 version in our bundle.js. The next thing we have is module and this is an object which contains loaders. Now the loaders tell Webpack what to use. So in this case, our loaders is going to be Babel. So this just tells Webpack to run our code through Babel. And the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to exclude our node modules because we don't want our node modules to go through this process. And then we're going to have our loader and that's going to be a string of Babel. So our entry is the file that we write our code in. The output is the file that Webpack spits out and the module and the loaders are what tell Webpack which loaders to use. So in our case, it's going to be Babel. So what's going to happen is write our code in our index.html, Webpack runs it through Babel, converts to ES5 and we get a bundle.js spat out at the other end. So the next thing we need to do is create a file called babelrc. So go ahead and touch, it's called .babelrc. Go ahead and open that up. And then in this file, we simply have an object with, a, it was JSON actually, sorry. So preset and then pass an array and we have ES2015 and then stage dash three. And if you remember, they were two Babel presets that we installed and that's actually plural. So that should be presets. Okay, so before we can convert our 
Redux application to ES6. We just need to sort out the files themselves. So go ahead and create a new folder called source. And that's where our index.html, sorry, not our index.html, where our index.js file is gonna be. So in our index.html, we're gonna go ahead and replace at the bottom here, replace the counter.js file with bundle.js because that's going to be the file that webpack spits out for us and we're going to go ahead and change our style sheet reference to style forward slash and we'll just call it style.css so we'll rename that file to style.css create a new folder for that one as well style and drag that in there Excellent, so the next thing we need to do is rename our counter.js. We'll rename that to index.js and drag that into our source folder. So it should be all set up now. So we've got our source folder with our index.js, got our styles, and then in our index.html, we have our bundle.js file and our style sheet. So we can go ahead and actually delete the script tag for Redux. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tidy up some of the stuff from the last video because I'm gonna remove the to-dos reducer because it's not gonna be really relevant for the next few videos since you're gonna confuse things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those quickly. So we just have our counter reducer now, so we don't need that. Okay, so we don't need our to-dos. We're no longer having our counter reducer prefix and get rid of that. And we don't need this render list function and we certainly don't need the call for that function. And we can get rid of those three there. Excellent. So we should now be in a position where we can go ahead and convert this to ES6. But before we do that, let's go ahead and start our Webpack server. So to do this, we just need to run npm start. And that should start our Webpack server and Webpack has bundled to our bundle.js. Uh, you won't actually see that, it's kind of hidden from you until you actually build, but no need to worry about that. So then go ahead and open up your index.html. Nope, sorry. Go ahead and open up your browser and you can navigate to localhost 8080 and you should get back to the application. But you'll see it's not working because we've got an issue here. Redux is not defined. And obviously we've just removed Redux, so we need to go ahead and convert our code to ES6. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is we're actually gonna to need to install Redux because now we no longer have that Redux script included. So let's go ahead and npm install Redux dash dash save. And that's gonna go ahead and allow us to import the Redux library into our file, into our application. Excellent, so now we've got Redux installed, we can go ahead and import what we need from that library. So go ahead and import create store from Redux. So all this means is we're gonna import the create store method from the Redux library. And you'll notice here, we are doing essentially the same thing. We're using the redux.createStore method. So now we've imported that, we now have that method on a variable called createStore. Go ahead and delete that Redux prefix. And actually because I've deleted the to-dos reducer, I can go ahead and delete combine reducer because we're not using that anymore. Go ahead and save that, and then gonna have to restart our webpack server so go ahead and run npm start webpack bundles our file for us go ahead and refresh we now have our es6 version of our redux application as far as the code for our reducer how for our redux application goes there's not a huge amount that can be es6 really at the moment the only obvious thing for me is the default parameter here. So how we initialize our state, if there isn't a state, is actually much easier to do in ES6. We can just literally pass in equals and then the object we want. So this means that if we don't have a state, 
we are going to have an initial state of count zero. So we can go ahead and get rid of that. So all this is, is just a default parameter. And it means that if we don't have a state parameter passed in when this is called, we just have a default of this object here. The next ES6 thing we can use is the keyword const. So we can replace these vars as const. So they're gonna be constants now. Nice and simple there. And then the final one is we can go ahead and we can replace these anonymous functions here with ES6 arrow functions, which make things just a bit nicer and much clearer in my opinion. Big fan of the arrow function. So with all that done, our Redux application is now ES6. And in the next video, we're gonna move on to the more advanced topic of Redux middleware. So if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. And I'll catch you in the next video.